Hey everyone, before we get into the video, I did want to quickly announce our new Academy course we just posted on the website. If you've ever wondered what exactly you need to learn to play Valorant at a competitive level, that's exactly what this course is made for. It walks you through everything you need to know, from being a very beginner to becoming an advanced player. Our Radiant coaches put a lot of effort into putting this course together, so what are you waiting for? If you're looking for a fast track to Immortal, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. Anyway, let's get into the video. One of the best things about Valorant is all the variety we have between the maps in the game. This gives different agents a chance to excel, granting them an opportunity to see competitive play where they otherwise wouldn't. But there are some agents that don't just excel when given the right map. They dominate. The outcome of a game can sometimes be determined in the agent select screen. And that's why today we're going to be talking about the four agents that are so good, you're borderline trolling if you don't play them. And what better combo to start this list off than with Breach on Fracture. Although the map map is pretty new, it's become clear that Breach is easily one of the best picks. Currently in pro play, Breach has been picked an overwhelming 90% of the time on Fracture, and there are a ton of reasons why. The map is littered with narrow hallways that are perfect for his fault line. These small corridors make it pretty much impossible to dodge the ability, guaranteeing that it sees value. There are also a lot of boxes and unique pieces of geometry that Breach can flash off of to help him out. On top of that, both of the sites are small enough where Breach's ult can completely cover the entire site. I can't tell you how how easy site executes are when you have his ultimate available. And this map is very unique because it's the only one with four ultimate orbs scattered around the map. Luckily, there's also no better agent to help fight for those orbs than Breach. Here are a few examples of how I secure the orbs using Breach's utility. When attacking, I usually like to play for the A main orb. I start by stunning A main to stop players from holding this angle, and then once I push up, I'll use flash off the wall to make sure no one is close. On defense, I do something similar, but in arcade. I use my stun here to stop enemies from pushing, and then flash off the wall if I think an enemy is there before securing the orb. Finally, if Breach wasn't good enough on this map, he also has the best counter to Killjoy's ultimate in the game in his Aftershock. Killjoy is already pretty strong on Fracture, but if it wasn't for Breach, she would be even harder to deal with. Her ultimate has some very powerful spots that can cover the entirety of both sites, and it makes her super difficult to counter. Well, it makes her super difficult to counter unless, of course, you have a Breach. Now, we know this makes a pretty solid case for a must pick, but let's take a peek at some of the other agents on this list. It might not be a major surprise, but the second pick on our list is actually Raze on Bind. When it comes to the duelist slot on a team, it's become pretty apparent that Jet is the best duelist in the game. So it says a lot when in pro play, Raze has a higher pick rate on Bind than Jet. But what makes Raze so strong on this map? Well, to start, there are a lot of tight areas on this map that can give her paint shells a ton of value. Areas like Hookah and U-Haul are so important to have control of on this map, and the nade helps so much in getting control of these areas. Speaking of Hookah, Raze is the best agent in the game for taking control of it, and she can do it pretty much all by herself. She has a boom bot lineup from the start of the round that can clear the entire left side, and then she can use her nade to clear out the right side. This opens up so much space for your team, since no one else has to commit any resources to take Hookah with you. The Boombot lineup is also good on its own, even if your team executes A right after, since it can deter flanks. The quickest path to flank your team if you're pushing A is through Hookah, so by using the Boombot, you give your team information if any enemies are pushing out from there. If the Boombot goes uncontested, then you know that the only area that enemies could be trying to flank from is through B Long, which makes a bigger difference than you might think. The main thing that sets Raze apart, though, is that she's just so efficient. She can entry, she can take space, she can gather info, and she can do practically all of this solo. It is incredibly valuable to have a duelist who doesn't always need to be supported by their team, and that's the reason Raze finds herself on our must-pick agents list. We're only halfway through the list though, and let me just ask you a question real fast. Have you ever tried to play a game of Breeze without a Viper on your team? There's just holes in your smokes everywhere, and nobody really knows where they're getting shot from. Yeah, that's the reason we had to put Viper on this list. The thing that makes Breeze so much different than the other maps in the game is the fact that there is just way too much open space that regular smokes won't cover properly. If your team is trying to push A and you're playing a controller like Omen, you can smoke spots like Bridge and Double Doors, but you just can't cover everything. Players can still be playing around the pyramids, the new yellow crate behind the site, or even Switch. There are just 
just so many areas that enemies can peek from that regular smokes just can't cover. But a good viper wall can fix all of that. A simple wall on A site can block pretty much everywhere an enemy would want to peek from, giving you a much easier spike plan. This is very similar on B site, where again, an Astra can smoke off tunnel and can sort of smoke off CT, but enemies can still play around the wall and peek your team as you're entering onto site. While Viper's wall can block off all of these areas on its own, making your site take much easier. Viper is just the best controller for the job on Breeze, and there currently isn't an agent that can do what she does in Valorant. Because of that, Viper is a must pick on the map, and you can't really afford to play without her. With that though, we're moving on to our final agent on this list, and that's going to be Sage on Icebox. Some people are going to try to tell you that Sage is not actually a must pick on Icebox, which may be true if this were VCT, but when it comes to your matchmaking games, you just can't afford to run the risk. That being said, even in pro play, she's the most picked Sentinel on Icebox with almost an 80% pick rate, and that's definitely not a stat to scoff at. When people think of Sage on Icebox, they mostly think of walling off tube on defense or walling for the plant on B, and those are great great ways to use it. Tube is a spot that can be really hard to watch since it's so easy to smoke off mid and block your team's line of sight. That's why most of the time it's just easier to wall it off and forget about it. And as for the B plant that everyone likes to do, I will admit, although helpful, there are a bunch of other ways you can use her wall. For example, you can actually use it to stop the enemy team from planting on B as well. If you notice that the enemy team pushes B every round, walling off the site can help stall long enough for your team to rotate. Also, as good as the wall is for helping get the plant down on B, it's also equally as useful on A as well. A site on Icebox has so many angles that enemies can be holding from, so being able to just wall off a piece of the site, get the plant down, and then fall back into post-plant positions can be so powerful. Especially since Viper is incredibly strong on Icebox too, sometimes just playing for post-plant is the best strategy. That's why having such a strong agent like Sage is so important, because you need that agent that is able to buy your team just enough time to get that spike down so you can set up for post-plant. And no other agent in the game can guarantee a plant quite like Sage does, so that's why she needs to be included on this list. But remember, none of these must picks matter if you're not able to play them efficiently. That's why on skillcap.com we spent so much time creating courses on how to play all of these agents to their maximum level. Every agent in this video has its own course on the site, made by actual Radiant players who will walk you through how to get the most value out of your abilities. Not to mention, this is all backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so it's literally no risk to your wallet. So what are you waiting for? Stop messing around and head on over to skillcap.com to get the rank you've always wanted. Anyway though, that's gonna conclude our video for the four must-pick agents in Valorant. We probably could have included a few more agents on this list, so if you'd like to see a future video like this, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to remember, although we call these agents must-picks, anything's possible, and you shouldn't give up your games just because you don't have the perfect team comp. That being said, hopefully thanks to this list, you're able to better understand what some of the best agents in the game are on each map. Finally, as always, we here at SkillCap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.